My name is Vito Scaletta. I was born in Sicily in 1925. That little guy's me. I'm standing there with my parents and my sister Francesca in front of our old house. I don't really remember too much about the old country, except that we were pretty hard up. And then one day my father decided it was time to move away. from Sicily, across the ocean, to start a new life in America. Anything as fantastic as Empire Bay. It was beautiful. On the other hand, I'd never seen anything filthier, more disgusting than our new shithole of an apartment. The American dream. It was more like a nightmare. My father started working at the port for the guy who arranged our immigration. It was backbreaking work. And what little money he made mostly went towards booze. Eventually my parents sent me to school. I had to learn English. I sure as hell wasn't gonna do that in a neighborhood full of Italians. That's where I met Joe. Come on, you don't hurry it up. We ain't got all night. Over time, Joe and I got to be best friends. And since we were both poor and there wasn't much work around, <sighs> shit, we started a little business of our own. Freeze! Police! Stop! Vito, this way! Tore me to bed! Stop! Run shoot! Shit. Okay, you bastard. Spread your legs. Fuck. Now put your hands on the fence. I'm sorry. Well, that one time it didn't work out so good. The year was 1943. America was at war. And the army was looking for guys who spoke the language to help with the invasion of Sicily. I was 18. And anything seemed better than jail. Who says you can't go home again? Operation Husky. I was assigned to the 504th Parachute Infantry. On the 11th of July, we were supposed to be dropped over the southern coast of Sicily. But we got hit by flak and we bail out. Way behind enemy lines. Only three of us made it. If it wasn't for the local resistance, we wouldn't have had a chance. So when Mussolini soldiers came into the town and started rounding everybody up, we decided to return to fate. Se nessuno parla, quest'uomo morirà. All right, Scaletta. Take the shot. All right, Scaletta. Take the shot. On me! Shit! I died! I died! Shit! Super! Ah! Jesus! Ah! 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 Ah!
Galena, you alive? Yeah, just about. Huh? Well, then get off your ass and let's move. Grab all the ammo you can carry. This might be our last chance. Whoa! Look at this shit. On the stairs! Hey, grease ball! Catch! Must have the prisoners upstairs. Clear the second floor. Scaletta, you take point. Right behind you. Oh, the <laughs> The door, Scaletta! Kick it in! Arrenditi, o gli faccio saltare il cervello! Shit. Looks like we're going this way. Come on. Quando siamo arrivati a me cucina. Ma chi è quello? Lo conoscete? Eh, lo conoscono tutti. Don Calò è un uomo d'onore. È uno stupido trucco degli americani, non ditemi che gli credete. No, è davvero Don Calò. Ogni tanto dovessi ascoltare i consigli di noiacci del posto. Ci rendiamo. Sapete che potete fidarvi di me. Che ne dite? Don Calò, the head of the Sicilian mob. An entire garrison of troops surrendered that day. Why? Because he told them to. A few years later, the Nazis put a bullet in me. I was in the hospital for a bit, and then I got a month's leave so I could go home. At least for a little while. Vito! Over here! Joe! Hey, hey, hey! Welcome home, buddy. How'd you know? I got my sources. Come on, let's take a ride. Nice car. Comes with the territory. I know you're itching to get home, but first, let's get a beer. Yeah, sure.
There it is. Empire Bay. Tell the truth, you miss it? Hey, there's a bear shit in the woods. Not like this place ever done me any favors, but anything's better than a foxhole. It's with this shitty weather. They're saying this is the coldest winter on record. Papers say it's gonna keep up like this for weeks. Don't worry, though. A drink will warm you right up. How long's it been since we had a drink together, Vito? Two years? Almost three. Tony Sicelli's party, right? Come on, Vito. Come on. The last drink we had together was right after your romance funeral. Right before you shipped out. You remember. Ah, uh, five minutes. We're already talking about my deadbeat father. Can we change the subject, please? So tell me, pal. What was it like over there, anyway? I kept reading the papers to see what was going on. And you know how much I hate reading? Yeah, I know. You guys kicked Mussolini's ass, right? Uh, sort of. We had a little help from a guy named Don Calo. No shit. Don Calo. I heard of him. Really? You bet. I know guys like him over here. Wise guys. You work for them, you set. You fuck with them, you die. Nice to see you've been busy. Yeah, and I heard you got a medal, right? From old man Patton himself. Whoa, so you're a real war hero, huh? <laughs> and then what? You screwed a couple of Sicilian broads and came home? Yeah, right. <laughs> the old country. Over here, you can screw anything with a heartbeat. No one gives a shit. What a country. Here's to the U.S. of A. and to having you back home. Salud. Ah, salud. Chin down. How come you're back? They let you out early for good behavior? Nah, I took a bullet a couple months back, spent some time in the hospital, and now I'm on leave. Wait, wait, wait. You mean you gotta go back? <laughs> What'd you think? The war ain't over yet. You don't want to go back, do you? Nah, of course not, but what can I do? One minute. Wait right here. Hey, Giuseppe, it's Joe. Remember uh, last week, you know, the, guy, the guy's name is uh, Vito Scaletta. Thanks, Giuseppe. All right, I'll see you later. Okay, listen up. It appears that your injury is much more serious than it first appeared, and the doctors say you can't fight no more. What? Oh, whoa, whoa. did you just... Like I said, I know people. You get all the official paperwork tomorrow. When it comes to the right stamps and signatures, it's just a question of money. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> Isn't that a bit risky? It's me that can end up in a slammer, you know? And how am I gonna pay for it? I got it covered. Think of it as a welcome home present. And don't worry, the documents will be clean. Trust me. Well, thanks. You're welcome. Como no frade, you're like a brother to me. Now you can start thinking about what you're gonna do next. Sure. But first, I gotta go home. All right, you wanna ride? No, thanks. I wanna walk around a little, see what's changed since I've been gone. No problem. Say hello to your sister for me. Come see me tomorrow. We got a lot to talk about. I can't believe you just got me out of the service. Thanks again. No problem. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Here we are. All right, thanks. Keep the change. Hey, what's the good word? How you doing, soldier? Ah! Vito! Let him go! Yeah, we'll be right back. Hi, Mama. I'm back. Vito. Vito, my boy. <laughs> my boy's home. I thought I'd never see you again. <laughs> Francesca and me, we wait. Hey, no. sis, what's going and on? We wait for you. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Sit down, oh. sit down. You must be hungry, Vito. Francesca made you a special dinner. Zuppa di pollo. It's good for you. Wow. 
Looks good, Frankie. It's a shame your papa didn't live to see this. He would be so proud, Vito. Yeah, sure. Vito, you know better. Sorry, Mama, sorry. Felice signore, pronunciare la propria volontà. Stiamo ricevendo, provvedere la propria cucina di noi. You should get some sleep. Your room is just like you left it. I'll see you two in the morning. This ain't gonna cut it. I gotta find a place to stay. So you have to go back soon? Actually, uh, looks like I won't. Uh, Joe's taking care of it for me. Joe, you want to get into trouble again? Mama, would you rather me go back and get shot again? No. Exactly. No. Joe probably saved my life. Promise that you won't get in any more trouble with that, Joe. You know, your papa used to work for this man at the waterfront named Papa Lardo. He's in the union. You could talk to him, work hard like you were your papa. Talk to him. Please, promise me you go talk to him today. Okay, Mama, okay, I promise. Grazie, Leo. I don't give I'm a sorry. damn. I don't care we'll get if you money. gotta sell hey, everything I you got. What the hell's going on here? Vito! You mind your business, no. asshole. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Come on, Junior. I'm gonna take you to school. Oh, tough guy. Scaring a woman, huh? Come on. Show me what you got. Vito, please. <laughs> You're making it even worse. Oh. That's right, get the fuck out of here! You're gonna be sorry! The both of you. What the hell was that all about? I'm sorry, Vito. We didn't want to bother you with this. Bother me? Bother me with what? Come on, tell me what's going on here, Frankie. Right before he died, Papa borrowed money. A lot of money, from a loan shark. Thinking he'd get a better job and pay him back. 
We found out right after you left for the war. How much? Two thousand dollars. What? Shit. The worst thing is, this guy wants it all back by the end of this week. Otherwise, the debt goes up again. <sighs> I ain't gonna make that kind of money working at the port. Who is this guy? I don't know. Mama won't tell me. It's okay, Vito. We'll manage somehow. Don't worry. I'll take care of this. I promise. Thanks, Vito. Take care of yourself. <sighs> I gotta get my hands on two grand fast. I bet Joe could help me out. Yet. It's the same as when you asked me ten seconds ago. <sighs> Crying out loud. What the hell's the matter with you now? It's taking you forever and I'm cold. So sit in the damn car if you're cold. It's cold in the car, too. Hurry up and fix this piece of junk. You can get done a hell of a lot quicker if you quit nagging me and give me a hand. I am not nagging you. Yeah, uh-huh. Hey, watch it, buddy. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, uh, do you know where Joe Barbro lives? To the right of the stairs. And tell him that racket last night has to stop. If he don't like it, he can find another place to live. <laughs> this is a bad time. <laughs> we ain't getting out at all. Come on in, let's talk. Uh, you disgusting pig. I picked up these broads on my way back from the store. I've been waiting for you. All right, girls, that's it for now. I got business. Stop by tomorrow, okay? We'll pick up where we left off. Chop, chop. Come on, Joey. Why do we have to stop when we can all have fun? The fun's over, baby. Later, I say. Me and Vito here haven't seen each other for a long time. We got a lot of catching up to do. Looks like you're doing okay, Joey boy. Not bad. I tell you, that little Spanish broad is fucking wild. So how'd it go at home? Good. Mama wasn't thrilled when I mentioned your name, though. Now, you know how she is. She wants me to get a straight job. You're gonna look for one? I don't know, but I sure as hell ain't gonna make the same mistake my old man did. I gotta pay off his debts, then get back on my feet and get my own place. I need to make some real money, and punching the clock ain't gonna cut it. Hey, you can stay with me as long as you need to, and we'll find you a job where you can make good money without killing yourself, all right? Music to my ears. Right now, I'm living off the 20 bucks the state gives me every week. <laughs> I know lots of people who pay well for a risky job, so to speak. I'm sure I can line something up for my oldest friend. The working man's a sucker, that's for damn sure. You said it. Okay, step one. I gotta introduce you to Giuseppe so we can pick up them discharge papers. Let's go.
You made enough cash for all this in the last three years? More like the last three months. I barely had time to furnish the place. Three months? Holy shit. You just gotta know the right people, and you're all set. Cause you know me. Whoa, look at this bed. Hey, hey, oh, hey, I don't know how you did things in the army, but here it's only one man to a bed, all right? Hey. What, are you kidding me? After seeing the two broads that just left, I wouldn't touch that thing if you paid me. Go ahead. There's plenty of hot water. This where I'm gonna sleep? Yep. All yours. I'll rest later. So you thought about what you're gonna do now? You said you were gonna introduce me to that guy Giuseppe. No, 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 no. I meant, you know, the big picture. When you was over there, didn't you think about what you was gonna do when you got back? No, not really. Well, besides the usual, you know. Find a nice girl, settle down. Whoa. Hey, there's gonna be plenty of time for that shit later. Right now, I'm gonna make sure you live a little. Hey, uh, thanks again for that thing with the discharge papers. Hey, uh... You think I could, uh... What? Drive, Vito? The roads are icy. You ain't never drove a car before. Joe, I was driving almost the whole time I was over there. Yeah, but this ain't no tank, Vito. This is one of the nicest cars money can buy. I didn't drive a tank. I drove a Jeep. What the hell's a Jeep? It's, uh... Never mind. It, you gonna let me drive or what? All right, all right. Here's the keys. Just be fucking careful. All right, when it's cold as fuck outside, you gotta give it a little more gas than usual. That's the pedal over there on the right. I know, Joe, I know. Okay, now make a right here. Then just go straight for a while. Hey, whoa, 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 slow it down a bit. No need to get pulled over for no reason. Welcome to Giuseppe's General Store, a thief's paradise. You name it, he's got it. He even sells phony gun permits and discharge papers for guys tired of getting their asses shot off. Hey, Giuseppe, I brought Hello, you a Joe. new customer. He's uh, straight up, right? Yes, sir, all the way. This here's Vito, my oldest friend. This is Giuseppe, the best safe cracker uh, in Empire retired, Bay. please. How are you? The papers for you? Yeah, they are. You got them finished already? It was a pain in the ass, but sure, they're done. Well, thanks. This really gonna work? Nobody from the army will bother you again, trust me. You see? what I tell you? Here's the money. Take your papers, Vito. Uh, we need a set of lockpicks, too. That we do. And guess who's paying for them? Grazie. Well, you can test it right now. Here. Take this lock. You just need to insert the pick into the lock and lift all the pins. You use the wrench to hold the pins one by one. When all of the pins are set, just turn the wrench and the lock she opens. Easy. See you around, Giuseppe. Say Benedig. Easy, huh? Don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. I do it all the time when I lock my keys in the car. Okay. 
Lose him, quick. Roger that. Some guy here just assaulted an officer. 10-4. Looks like we lost it. So how do you like the car? Not too bad. Think I'll keep it. All right, let's go find ourselves a body shop. They provide the kind of services we're looking for. Hey, that don't sound cheap. Don't worry about it. I got it covered. Just find any body shop. I know the guy who runs it. Oh! How can I help you? A license plate. <laughs> For you, no problem. There you go. Gave her a couple of... You can paint it any color you like. Take your pick. Are you looking for a new set of wheels? Take your pick, pal. Bring it by any time. Radio News. I'm Lowell Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, not in all my 15 years of doing the news have I ever had to report on such a horrific story. All right, next you should introduce yourself to Mike Bruski. He'd probably have some work for you. All right, where is he? He owns a junkyard over in Riverside. You can't miss him. Hey, who's that guy? What guy? The guy at the body shop. Oh, Tommy. He's my buddy's nephew. He's kind of quiet, but let me tell you, the kid's some hell of a dancer. Saw him at the old dance hall in Oyster Bay a couple of weeks ago. He had all the broads going nuts. Do I detect a hint of uh, jealousy? Are you kidding? I don't need no dance moves. I got charm, my friend. Here, I'll give you some of my lines, so maybe you won't have to spend so many nights with Rosie Palm and her five sisters. Hey, here's one. Hey, is that a mirror in your pocket? Because I can see myself in your pants. <laughs> Here, I got another one. If I could rearrange the alphabet, I'd put you and I together. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, this one never fails. Hey, baby, that's a nice outfit. It look good, crumpled up at the foot of my bed in the morning. And this works for you. Oh, here, here's a good one. Hey, do you know the difference between sex and conversation? No? You want to go back to my place and talk? You got problems, you know that? How about this one? Why don't we go back to my place and play house? You be the door and I'll slam you. Oh, that was bad. Hey, when you measure seven soft, you don't have to be good with words. You get my drift? That's Mike's junkyard there. Just drive through the gate. Who's hey, here? Mikey boy, what's going on? Shit, Mike, you could wash your fucking hands once in a while. Now I need a fucking bath. 
Hey, I've been working. Working people occasionally get dirty, you know. Besides, I just wiped them off. With what? The same fucking rag you used to clean the toilet, you filthy fuck? Put a lid on it. What, what are you, from the health department, or you want to do some business? <laughs> business, of course. This here's my friend Vito. Vito, this is Mike Bruski. But don't shake his hand. I ain't got that much soap at home. Nice to meet you, Vito. Uh, me and Vito go way back. He just come back from overseas and he needs some cash. So I figure he can help with your, uh, supply problem. I can vouch for him. Uh-huh. Okay. Joe told you about our side business, right? Yeah. I only want regular cars, nothing fancy. You get a cut of every car. I take as many as I can handle. And don't bring no cops around, okay? They follow you here. I don't know your ass from Jesus. You get me? Got it. God damn it, Mike! You put your grubby mitts on my fucking coat. I paid a fortune for this thing. All right, calm down or I'll stick them up your ass, you sissy. You know, dry cleaning costs these days. Christ. And who knows if they can even get this filled you out. You shut up. Vito, listen to me. I need a Walter Coupe today. I got a few people looking for parts, but I can't find a car. Because you don't know where to look. Every time I drive down Hunters, I see one parked by a bar there. I think the place is called the Lone Star. Isn't that a move in your neighborhood? I'll stick out like a sore thumb. All right, look, I'll give you 350 bucks for it. It's worth the risk, right? 400. <laughs> All right, deal. Uh, Vito, come on, let's go on, diamo. Meantime, I'll be sending you the cleaning bill for my coat. Yeah, I'll change my address, you rat prick. Okay, listen up. This is your maiden voyage, so to speak. So try not to fuck it up, eh? Here, Vito, take this, just in case. Hey, nice. Hey, Mike, you mind if I test this thing out here? Sure. Knock yourself out. Here you go. Aim for that old wreck over there. Hey, you ain't a bad shot. Hey, Vito, see if you can hit the gas tank. I leave gas in that thing? There's a Pollock joke there, but I'll leave it alone. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Fuck you. All right, that's enough shooting. We got work to do. How does it feel to be back? Good. I feel a lot better with some money in my pocket. Hey, what's the rush? Money don't buy you happiness, you know. Get the fuck out of here. I was just fucking with you. Don't worry about the money. This little job is just the beginning. Pretty soon you'll be rolling. Oh. So, Sand Island's still the same shithole it was when I left? No, no, the place actually ain't too bad now. Oh, shit. How the hell that happened? All the moolies flew south for the winter. Of course it's still a shithole, Vito. You've only been gone a couple of years. Gonna take a lot longer than that for that neighborhood to turn around. Them people multiply like rabbits. What are you gonna do? It's even worse than when we was kids. They even got some kind of gang there now. What's their fucking name? Uh, the Beamers, the Boomers, something like that. I don't fucking know. Oh, that's just fucking great. Hey, what are you worried about? They're animals. All they do is sell dope and kill each other. They ain't gonna bother a guy like you. And even if they do, that's why I gave you that pistol. Oh, by the way, you carrying a gun now? What's the deal with that? Can't do business without it these days. Especially in this fucking neighborhood. You, uh, really know how to inspire... ...a confidence, you know that? Take 
a left up here. Look at this guy. Ain't even back a day and he's still good for his old neighborhood. Hey, what are you breaking up? It's from his window shop. Oh, it was years before it came In pursuit of a hit and run driver. Yeah. You got champagne taste Copy in your pockets, my friend. Don't worry, though. I'm going to help you change that. This one's going to cost you, sir. Don't look at me. I'm broke. that cream colored baby over there be careful do it quick and get the fuck out of there break a window if you have to and go i'll wait for your back at mike's what if i run into problems then you deal with them look consider this a test if you fail i hear the hiring down at the factory right just asking good luck pal i see you back at mike's from another mother. Aloha, man. <laughs> hey, what the fuck are you doing? He's got a gun! Six feet tall, dark hair, medium build. Copy that.
has an answer to that question. And that is the city of Elbing, Germany. In what has been a brutal and bitterly cold winter, the Soviet forces have taken the German city of Elbing. Losses were heavy for both sides, and the unbearable cold weather certainly couldn't have made things any easier. But somehow, the Soviet forces prevailed. Encouraging news for Allied forces who have had their fill of the brutal weather conditions. Pretty soon, it'll be Berlin or bust for the Ruskies. For Press Radio News, I'm Lowell Harris. Mission accomplished. How'd it go? Yeah, piece of cake. Except for the fact that the car belonged to a bunch of moolies who immediately tried to kill me right after you left. Ah, uh, probably the bombers. Hunters their neighborhood. Guys like that, you don't have to worry about them. They just hang out on the street, talk shit, steal shit, and smoke dope. <sighs> Let's see what we got here. Oh, nice. No stains. Clean. The lowlife get the money for this. Probably stole it himself. It's nice, though. How much did I say I'd give you for it again? 600. <laughs> oh, I like you, buddy, Joe. Here's your 400 bucks. Stop by again, okay? We can do some more business. Yeah, you bet, Mike. I see you, Mike. I'll stop by again real soon. All Me right, too. boys. I'll see you later. Here's your 300 bananas. I'm taking my cut as the middleman. Next time, you're on your own. All right. Thanks, Joe. All right, let's go home. I'm exhausted. Hey, you, get out. Please don't shoot. Pulled off that job without fucking it up. Nice going. Yeah, but I almost got my ass kicked. 
I didn't live through the war just to die in Sand Island. Hey, that's all part of the deal. Suspect is about six Take feet tall. It it. Dark hair, medium build. Doesn't like you're qualified for anything else. Ten for one. Yeah, I guess you're right. Don't worry about it. It's all gonna be a piece of cake. <clears throat> so, uh, what's the story with Bruski? Mike's a good guy to know. He's a little grouchy, but he's always got a scam going. He deals with stolen cars mostly. Spent some time inside a while back. I heard he used to stick up gas stations back in the day. You gonna make him pay the cleaning bill for your jacket? Nah, I'll let that one slide. I do a lot of business with the guy. Plus, he's got one hell of a temper. One time, we was at the track, and some mitt spilled a beer on his wind ticket. Mike beat the shit out of him till he went blind in one eye. For a lousy ten bucks, you believe that shit? Sounds like kind of a scumbag. Hey, you just got an out of hand for these people. And Mike's a pussycat compared to some of the guys I've met since he shipped out. You'll see. Hey, is there a safe place to park around here? I don't want to leave this thing out in the street. Yeah, that's why you're parking your car next to mine in the garage. The streets are full of criminals these days. Yeah, the neighborhood ain't what it used to be, huh? Hungry, there's some food in the refrigerator. You hungry, Vito? Take whatever you want from the fridge. Joe's pleasure, pal. It's Vito speaking. Vito, why didn't you come home last night? I was worried sick. Mama? I didn't know you had Joe's number. And whose phone is this? So have you spoken to Mr. Papalardo? Find yourself a job? Yeah, he told me to come by and see him today. Hopefully he's got some work for me. Okay, Vito. Good luck, mio bambino. All right, bye, Mama. <laughs> 